long-awaited aperture LightStorm 300D. This is not just another light, it's designed for those serious about lighting. Out of all the lighting products made by Aperture, the LightStorm 300 is the largest and brightest professional light they've made. It has won several awards, including Best Lighting Product at the National Association of Broadcast Professionals Conference, or NAB. Let's see why this light is being referred to as a game changer in the lighting world. Canvas bag. Silly to talk about the bag? It's important. The LightStorm 300 comes shipped with an all-in-one portable canvas bag, well padded and perfect for the mobile shooter. More importantly, it keeps all the pieces organized so you don't lose them. The package. Aperture always includes everything you need in their products, and this is no exception. There's a LightStorm 300D with a light protection cover and hanging column, the controller box, the power box with a spare fuse, power and XLR cables, reflector, wireless remote control and button battery, user manual and warranty card, and nice shoulder strap for the carry bag. Build quality. This unit is made out of aircraft grade aluminum so it's tough yet light. You can grab the carry handle using one hand since it weighs in at just 2.1 kilograms or 4.6 pounds. Compare that to the typical 2000 watt tungsten light that can weigh over 9 kilograms which is nearly 20 pounds. Not only tough and lightweight, the real benefit is it's only slightly warm to the touch at 100% output, whereas these other types of lights require gloves as you can literally fry an egg on them. If you ever burned your hands on these larger lights, you'll know what I mean. Light stand mounting. Light is mounted easily onto any standard light stand. The thumb knobs are really appreciated. Setting up the unit. Acting on a request from customers of previous products, the LightStorm comes with a thick plastic protective cover. Simply pull on the spring-loaded pin on the body of the light and the cover will release. I highly suggest you do not discard this cover and use it for transport. Don't forget to pull off the light protection label, which of course can be discarded. LightStorm uses a nice compression mechanism to pivot the light to any angle. Simply loosen the knob, adjust the light to the angle needed, and tighten it back down. Mounting options. LightStorm uses a standard mount design allowing a wide variety of accessories, such as this Bowens reflector included with the package. Simply mount the accessory and a slight turn locks it securely in place. Other accessories can be used such as regular and mini light domes, Fresnel attachments, umbrellas, and space lights to name a few. Power options. Plug the included 4-pin XLR cable into the back of the light. I appreciate the XLR cable locks ensuring the cable isn't knocked out yet easy to unplug. Run the XLR cable from the light into the control unit. Next is the power adapter unit. You run the second included XLR cable from the control unit to the power unit. Then attach the AC cord to supply power to the system. The back of the power unit contains cooling ports and a fan. Although the fan does make some noise on the power unit, that's why it's separate from the light. The other power option is on the controller itself. As shown here is options for two V-mount batteries and you could use gold mount batteries as well. Each one has a D-tap port allowing even more power options or tapping off the batteries. If these V-mount and gold mount power options are new to you, check out the video in the info card that should pop up or in the link in the description below where I describe what these are and how they work. You get about an hour or two from using batteries, which may not seem like a lot, but when you're out in the middle of a forest, your option is to rent some generators or just not use powerful lights. This makes using battery power for lights of this caliber a first. The controller has switches for selecting the channel and group for use with the remote control allowing you to turn the unit on and off and adjust the intensity of the light. You can also control whether you'd like the fan on all the time or automatic and an on off switch on the unit. The wheel on the controller allows you to adjust the intensity of the light. The best thing about having the controller box separate from the light is it greatly reduces the top weight of the light, making it quite portable and allowing you to easily mount the light just about anywhere. Wireless remote control. The wireless remote control may seem like a gimmick, but it's not. 
It uses 2.4 gigahertz technology, allowing you to adjust the brightness wirelessly up to 150 meters away, which is almost 500 feet. Why would you need this? Let's say the light is mounted on a stand, a power pole, and a tree outside shining in a window or high up on the ceiling. The ability to stand behind the camera and see the lighting while adjusting the brightness remotely becomes critical. Otherwise, you're trying to direct someone else or having them go back and forth to the light. I should also mention that the remote control has 360 degrees of blind coverage, meaning it doesn't matter where you are standing. The fact that this remote works with all aperture lights makes it pretty special. I can have one light on each channel and control their brightness individually or put an entire set of lights in groups and control them all. Temperature control. If you've worked with lights with this kind of output, 2000 watts, you know they're heavy and incredibly hot or they have noisy fans that are a real pain to shoot with on set. Lightstorm 300 uses an intelligent temperature control system, which is genius. It has internal thermometers that vary the speed of the fans based on the system's temperature. So even at maximum speed, these fans are whisper silent, keep the light cool and eliminate having to handle the lights with special gloves. COB technology. Notice it's called the Lightstorm COB 300. A recent technology development in LED lighting is COB, which stands for Chip On Board. This technology allows a significant increase in how much light can be output. In other words, this light outputs a ton of light using very little power. TLCI rating. TLCI may be a new term for you. These terms, CRI, which stands for Color Rendering Index, and TLCI, which stands for Television Lighting Consistency Index, are standard measures of how accurate a light renders color. This is very important. Many a filmmaker has spent hours color correcting their films and videos, not realizing the reason was their lights have a low index rating. Without a whole video on what these mean, CRI was a standard based on the human eye, and the updated standard, TLCI, is a software-based index which is more accurate. Given your camera's white balance is set correctly, a TLCI rating above 90 means there will be little or no color correction needed, and the Lightstorm 300 has a TLCI rating of 96, which means it is nearly perfect. As a tip, don't buy lights with a CRI or TLCI rating below 90 or you'll be chasing your tail trying to figure out why the color temperature in your shots is always a bit off. Illuminance. Lightstorm 300 compares to a typical 2000 watt tungsten light used on sets. I'm not gonna explain all these terms to you, but if you know what these means, you should be impressed. It boasts 48,000 lux at 0.5 meters with its included reflector, and you can reach an incredible 142,000 lux at 0.5 meters with the optional Fresnel mount. Basically, the sucker is bright. I did a bunch of tests with my three point lighting on and off using this light. I also turned all the lights off, played with the intensity of this light, and <laughs> this thing goes from a really nice 10% brightness to a blinding 100% brightness. That brightness is important, is when I'm trying to light something like a wide shot from 30 feet away, I'm gonna have no problem. That also allows me to keep my ISO, or on other cameras, the gain, very low, meaning great shots and no grain. Color fidelity. Lightstorm shines brightly at 5500K, which is perfect for shooting. Since it has a CRI rating of 95 plus and a TLCI rating of 96 plus, this allows for extremely precise color accuracy, making it perfect for a broadcast video, photography, television production, and studio filmmaking. High frame rates. This is an LED light many a filmmaker has been pretty cheesed off finding out in post that they didn't notice with the naked eye that their new cheap lights flicker like mad. This light doesn't flicker at any of the various shutter speeds I tested. Things you probably shouldn't do. I couldn't help myself. I decided that since the plastic cover is basically a diffuser, I connected it to the light to see what I would get. Probably shouldn't do that as though the body of the light doesn't get that hot, the tip of the light will at 100% power. I thought it might be cool to check out, but I don't recommend it. Pricing. For most watching this channel, you may not believe that a single light can cost just under a thousand bucks, and that's okay. When you purchase a light like this, you're purchasing something you're gonna be using for the next 10 or 20 years. 
but I can tell you at just under $1,000, it's way cheaper than equivalent lights that cost three to 10 times as much and way better. Conclusions. This light is, well, just the bomb. If you're gearing up for lighting, there's no way you could go wrong with this one. What makes recommending this easy is it's backed by a company that really gives a crap about providing high-end filmmaking solutions at an affordable price. That's not a sales pitch. I get nothing for recommending this product or the company either way. Links to the LightStorm COB300D and all accessories are in the description below. Oh, and please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get weekly updates. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So this dude walks into a bar and starts talking about filmmakers and how they act like assholes. This really pisses me off. So I walk over to him and I say, dude, that's really offensive. He says, sorry, are you a filmmaker? I say, no, I'm an asshole.